I'm skinning with Church of God in Jesus' name. I got my holy cross. <laughs> <laughs> we tease each other after church all the time or a special event. Girl, did you get saved today? God really spoke to my heart today. And I'm like looking back at them like, I told you guys, I told you guys. So I'm so honored, I'm beyond honored to be here. I'm also um, a lead outreach manager with Project Ricochet, Dr. Elamine. She has been pushing me, pushing me, pushing me to walk in these amazing shoes with you ladies, the shoes of my own. And I'm almost speechless right now. Um, God birthed that vision of um, the healthy wife, right? That's why part of the reason we are here I allowed us to have our healthy wife as today to honor the women. God birthed that vision in my heart, even as I was listening to you guys, you never know what that wife at home is going through. You know, the Bible says submit, the Bible says honor, the Bible says a soft answer. But well, how do I do that, really? <laughs> and we come together and we hold each other hand and learn how to do that and be that safe place for each other. So I'm so grateful for the safe place that you ladies have created for us on today. And I just salute all of you. I just, I, I'm gonna just keep moving because time ain't gonna just let me sit here. I'm honored to present a short, sassy, classy, beautiful, <laughs> loving, and large enough to see, Claudia, Claudia Love Maya. She's the author of 13 books, including the upcoming Morning Pages from Broadleaf Books. Claudia holds an MFA in writing from Spalding University. She serves as a coordinator for the uh, Carnegie Center Community Black Writers Collaborative and co-hosts the Abbey of the Arts Lift Every Voice book club, spotlighting Christian contemplative tradition books for diverse authors. With a mission to amplify marginalizing voices, Claudia's focus at the Carnegie Center is to elevate black voices. The KBWC has showcased numerous black writers, has reached thousands of listeners through it, WUKY Public Radio Partnership, and has hosted events that welcome hundreds to the Carnegie Center including notable figures like Frank X. Walker, Crystal Wilson, and Silas House. Following the loss of her son to an overdose in 2021, Claudia discovered her talent for a comforting the bereaved, leading her to pursue studies with the Guidance Spiral Death Keeper Certificate Program. She aims to become a death doula, specializing in supporting the black community through grief. Claudia Love resides and works in Lexington, thank you again, alongside her daughter and two feline companions. <laughs> we salute you, Claudia. Abini and Project Ricochet and WUKY um, and the uh, remarkable women whose shoulders I stand with. I would like to thank God for my presence here and my ancestors whose shoulders I stand on. My mother, auntie who raised me, Charlene Poplar, my grandmother, Emma Elizabeth Vaughn, and my great-grandmother, Amanda Bell Brown. Um, without them, I wouldn't be here. And I'm looking at me too. I wanna begin by sharing some words someone I loved said to me at a very low point in my life. He said, you're always sick. Y'all, he said it with his whole entire chest. <laughs> <laughs> he said it like a wad of spit in my face. And he was right, I was sick. I was in my 40s, confined to my bed most days, secretly wondering, if I would soon be placed in a nursing home. I was in pain most of the day and always during the endless nights and I was cripplingly depressed. I was on strong pain medicines that helped, but a nine to five was impossible. It still is. 
I'm thankful that medications offer me relief even now, but medicine has not healed me. That day, hurt and angry, I wrote a list of things I did in the bed. They included these. I wrote a blog about being a hot mess and a believer in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It was honest, more than a lot of the Christian books I was reading. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, tens of thousands of people began to read it. That blog got the attention of a publisher at Random House and he cold emailed me an unknown and asked me to write a book for them. Hmm. He became my agent and got me a six book deal right out of the gate. Simon and Schuster acquired those books, all of which I wrote from my sick bed hmm. with my babies crawling in bed with me to love me and to be loved by their mama, even though she was sick. I became one of the top 5% highest paid earners my agent represented. I built a love tribe of people who are imperfect and who were often alienated and marginalized. And together, we formed a community of great, beautiful, messy faith. And all of us were epic hot messes. <laughs> but we understood that God loves us just as we are. Mm. I made more money than the man who said those words mm -hmm. from the bed. <laughs> yeah. I was more accomplished from the bed. I was a badass. <laughs> <laughs> but I still didn't get it. Do I still have a chronic pain condition? Yes. I'm in pain right now. But I'm also here in the moment. I don't think healing is what we tend to think it is. I believe you're healing when you can see all your dignity and worth regardless of your condition. Yes. It's when you can remain in the moment, present, especially to yourself. Mm -hmm. or you might forget who you are temporarily, like I did today thinking about this event. <laughs> but you can always go right back to knowing who you are and knowing you're awesome. <clears throat> Some of us are so riddled with trauma, we don't know where to begin to mm. unpack it. In my, I am in my fourth year of weekly therapy, still removing layer upon layer of lies about my worth mm. that have been there for a long time. Mercy. Mm. If you can hear my voice right now, and you were feeling or have at any time felt unworthy, mm -hmm. let me tell you where healing begins. It starts with love. Mm -hmm. Love yourself enough to be your own hero and rescue your damn self without hesitation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> love yourself enough to get the help you need if you need it. And never ever forget, you are worthy. You belong, you contribute. You deserve to be recognized in all your glory, your dignity intact, whether you are in the bedroom or the boardroom. <laughs> what is resilience? We think about it as the ability to get through life's difficulties no matter what, and to stay vertical, mostly because there are bad days. And it's true, that's what resilience is. But I wanna to add to that, being a person who has been knocked down enough times to know that you can lose yourself in your suffering. True resilience is remaining who you are at the core, a God created and God given to the world wonder made in their image and likeness. Remember that about yourself, no matter what is happening around you. Remember it when you can do and when you can't do. You are healing when you recognize that in the eyes of the creator, you're already whole. In the Bible, Jesus asked the diseased man, will you be made whole? Mm -hmm. Will you Come on. be made whole? Let me give you a hint. 
The answer is always yes. Come on. Be made whole, whatever that looks like, even from the bed, even if you stay in the bed. Because some of us are going to die with the conditions, but we are still whole. Be made whole because you love yourself, your family, and your community. And be made whole for and from the God of your understanding. Be all that you are, always, present, in the moment, and authentically you. That is wholeness. Be made whole. Thank you. Mm -hmm.